Amen. Mary, Mother of God, God is good and all the time. The Word of God today calls us to rejoice. The word rejoice has appeared so many times in our readings and even the Psalms. And uh, in the first reading, we are told to rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad for her, for you love her. Jerusalem was the center of so many activities for the Israelites. But above all, it was a center of worship. And uh, they came together for worship in Jerusalem and they looked at Jerusalem as a wonderful place in their lives. They loved it. And uh, as they, as Prophet Isaiah, talk about Jerusalem, we hear how he's talking of her consoling breast. Uh, you may drink deeply with delight from abundance of glory. Uh, so, uh, it was joy being in Jerusalem because of consolation, blessings, and all that the people received. So we too, coming together as God's people to worship, we rejoice. A place of worship, our place of worship, becomes Jerusalem to us who mourn and also who seek consolation. And so uh, the church becomes or is a mother to us. And that is why we come so that through the church we may worship, praise, thank God and also bring all our distresses and all our sufferings and all our joy to God in the church. And that is why we are here to pray and to worship God. And we also hear from the second reading, St. Paul writing to Galatians, also, also talking about what he has received also as uh, a sign of following Christ. And he talks of glory. Uh, glorifying God in the cross. Uh, he sees the glory of God in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, in this he also rejoices. And uh, he has received so many marks because of the faith that he professed. But uh, Despite of all that, he still trusts and he counts so much on the graces that he has received from God. He is so grateful, he is so joyous because of the graces that he has received from God uh, through the cross of Christ and uh, also through the marks that he has received in proclaiming the gospel. We also, in the gospel, hear about Jesus sending his disciples. The disciples, uh, we know Jesus sent, the, appointed the 12 apostles, and again he appointed 72 others, and sent them ahead of him to places where he wanted to go. And uh, he did so because the harvest was great, but the laborers are few. So he even asked that we pray that God may send laborers into the harvest. 
You know, in our lives, we realize that uh, we sometimes do things and uh, want or ask before even you do certain things, what gain am I going to get from this? What am I going to gain from this? What am I gaining from it? What is the reward? <clears throat> and sometimes the effort we put in a particular work depends on the reward that we are to receive. So, when we look at uh, the 72 who are called, they were called because the harvest is there. The harvest is there. But again, if Christ talks about harvest being there and laborers are being few, why? Why are laborers few? Could be because of the reward. They do not understand what they would gain from the work of the Lord. Uh, the work of the Lord, the reward. They are not sure of the reward. Because could be it is not heartily reward that they may be looking for. Even now, when we talk of the harvest being great, okay, we know that it might not only be the harvest of preaching the word of God as such, but as it's all put there, the, 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 the harvest is great in the sense of also uh, bringing people to Christ, but also the harvest may be great because in terms of um, uh, services that are required, services that are required uh, because of could be even uh, things, so many things that humanizes a human person that needs to, uh, pe that people, people need to do that would dignify the you know, human person. So anything that we ask to do to dignify the human person is a labor that we need to work on. And these are so many so many. How many people are suffering who need to be given direction, need to be counseled? How many people are suffering who are angry, has not, have nothing to eat? How many people are suffering who are sick? And in all this, uh, God needs or we need to be sent in those situations of life. But again, these might be a conditions that people do not take. Sometimes it's left, could be for everybody, could be somebody, could be anybody, could be even nobody. You know, something can, can be there to be done, but if it is not properly done or properly planned, it might not be done the way it is supposed to be, do, to be done. Yeah. Somebody may say, Anybody could do it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry because it was everybody to do the job or to do it. Somebody can get angry. And, uh, you know, this idea of anybody, somebody, and all that can leave a job undone. And apparently, it was this kind of thing that was happening. Nobody was there to do the harvest. So Christ sent the 72 to, uh, to this. And this reading also brings the idea of responsibility and accountability. Are we responsible? Are we accountable to each other? And so that is why when the 72 were appointed, they went to town and places where Jesus himself was about to go. So the places that they were going to could be those 36 places or 36 villages or 36 towns that they were supposed to go to. Jesus was also meant to go there later on. So that means they are to prepare the way also for Jesus. But this also sometimes can happen in our daily lives. We 
are also the disciples of today. We need to go. We need to evangelize. We need to make people know Christ. We need to prepare people to, for Christ. So sometimes we can also delay. We can delay Christ to, to heal. We can delay Christ to bless. We can delay Christ to do certain things because we have not done our bit. There is also that bit of ours that is expected of us as Christians. We are also sent like 72 and we have to go. And that is why we are told to go immediately, not to waste time and to travel also light. So my dear people of God, we need to go. We need to go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord to our neighbor, to ourselves, to our neighbor, to those who suffer, to those who need our help, however little it may be, but already in doing, in, in doing so, we'll be proclaiming the gospel. And that is why it is urgent. It is urgent. We need to focus on it and do it immediately. And that's why Christ also calls us that uh, conversion is near, is, is now, now. We need to be converted here and now. We don't need to wait. And that is what the Lord tells us. And we have to travel light. We need not to carry so many baggages. In our lives sometimes we carry so many things. So many things. Not only uh, physical things, physical baggages, but also spiritual baggages that we carry. Could be hate and forgiveness. Could be so many sins that we have committed. We don't see the need of confessing them and all that. All these baggages. Why are we carrying them? We don't need to carry all these baggages. We need to travel light as we do our daily activities which every day God sends us to do. So we need also to reflect and see what kind of baggages that we are carrying. The Lord wants us to travel light. So we are called to travel light and bring people to Christ. So let us pray today in a special way that uh, we focus on the labor of love. The labor of love. The labor of love is that labor that you will not gain anything from. It's not a labor that will get, not gain ever anything from, and it's a labor that could be nobody is there to take it, uh, and it is left for everybody, and at the, day, at the end of the day, nobody takes it, and all that. So where there's that kind of uh, um, gap, where there's that kind of gap that requires love? We bring in that labor of love. Where there's that uh, gap of uh, you know uh, need, particular need, and we bring in that that labor of love is required from us. So the disciples were called to go to that labor of, 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 of love, and uh, we have to know that if the harvest is already there, if we delay, then of course in doing that labor of love then of course the, you know, the harvest, the, the, the fruits can uh, you know, rot in the field. So that is why it is immediate, the labor of love. And that labor of love is demanded of us. There are certain uh, careers that we have to, we have to uh, do without thinking of the gain. But sometimes in most cases, we run away from the labor of love. We run away from that. And that is why sometimes we may go to even places of treatment, hospitals and all that, and where the labor of love is required, sometimes we take a long time. And the Lord wants to act, and we take a long time. Even to take care of the sick. We may take our emergency. We may take a long time. The Lord may want to act. The Lord may want to heal this person. But it will take a long time. 
The Lord may also want to call this person, but we're taking a long time. And the labor of love at the end of the day brings joy in our lives. It brings joy in our life at the end of it all. That's why the disciples, when they, they came back, they were happy. And they talked of, Lord, even uh, uh, Satan listened to us. Satan listened to us. And uh, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You know, even for the twelve, it was a little bit difficult. They came back complaining uh, that even it was hard. Some devil did not listen to them. That's why Jesus never told them, no, some needs prayer and fasting. But these 72, when they came back, they were so happy. And they were rejoicing. And the Lord told them, pole, pole. don't rejoice for what you have done. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So that is the labor of love we do. And the reward is there for us that God alone knows. So we cannot demand in the labor of love, love. So let us also pray that God may give us that spirit of doing that labor of love each and every day as we are sent to do the work of the Lord. So today, as we are gathered to here today, we pray that God strengthen us in our call to do his will, particularly in uh, doing works of love that brings jo special joy to us. Today also in a special way, we uh, celebrate the sacrament, particular sacrament of confirmation. We know that this sacrament uh, strengthens the faith and also completes the sacraments of initiation. We, when we are baptized, we receive the life of God. We become children of God. Uh, we become members of the community of believers and we also uh, have the original sin taken away from us and also the personal sin. And uh, actually we receive the gift of the Spirit. And again, after being born in that way, we again are fed through the sacrament of the Eucharist. And uh, we grow in faith through that. But again, after that, we also are strengthened through the sacrament of confirmation. We now become an adult in faith. And for that matter, we can now stand for our faith. So these are very, very important sacraments in our lives as Christians and we ought to receive them so that again we can be disciples of the Lord. The Lord sends us through the power of the Spirit and for that matter we are also called to the field of the Lord to the labor of love. So that's why today we pray also in a special way for the members of our community who are now going to stand firm again in faith as they receive the sacrament of confirmation. Let us pray that God may continue sending his spirit upon us all so that we may continue to be witnesses of the Lord, so that we may continue uh, proclaiming the gospel of the Lord by our way of life and by our way of doing things so that we witness to Christ each and every day of our life. It may be difficult, in our present world, but again, the Lord calls us to continuously be accountable to him and be responsible to him each and every day of our life. The Lord be with you. Amen.